Hey, Hugh, you want to play Wolverine one more time? Yeah, sure, Ryan. <laughs> oh, I think Marvel is actually trying to kill me. Simply because they think they could just bring anyone back from the dead at this point. It doesn't matter what your arc was. You're coming back, you're coming back, and you're coming back. Remember 2017's Logan? You know, James Mangold's sublime masterpiece of comic book cinema, and probably still one of the best cinematic send-offs of a long-standing actor from an iconic role, well, ever? It was perfect. Hugh Jackman couldn't have asked for a better way to bow out after nearly 20 years of playing Wolverine. All was, and is well, the character and the performance alike cement themselves in the history books, and all is well in the- <laughs> That's just lazy writing. Why? Why is nothing sacred anymore? Oh my... Ugh. So, yeah. Hugh Jackman's gonna be back as Wolverine in an MCU Deadpool film? Yay? No, I think this is a supremely bad thing. But I also think that it's a symptom of a much larger problem rather than the problem in and of itself. Don't get me wrong, it's very egregious. I mean, we're like, this is about as scraping the bottom of the barrel as they can get. Deadpool is a comedic satire of the superhero movie. Logan was a heartfelt conclusion. It's like if they brought Daniel Craig back for Bond 26 after the character's moving sacrifice in No Time to Die, only for the film he returns to be. Uh, I don't know, die another day? Totally, that's what this feels like. What could they possibly do to justify resurrecting Jackman's Wolverine? And I'm not talking about literally resurrecting him. Obviously, it'll probably be in a different timeline, but like the character, Jackman's run with the character, the impact that he had, it's all going to be cheapened. It's entirely banking on the idea that audiences want to see Jackman and Reynolds together, which that's fine. I love Hugh Jackman, and I like Ryan Reynolds, and sure, clearly the two of them are friends and have some sort of rapport together, but why in this setting? Why not do an original buddy film with Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds? You can make meta jokes there about him being Wolverine or him being Deadpool or whatever. Why defile Logan's grave for the sake of money? To that I say, why? Why does it need to be Wolverine? Why can't it be one of Deadpool's own supporting characters, or quite literally any other X-Men? Hell, you could even still do Wolverine in this film just with the new actor. It could almost be a little bit of a Deadpool hazing situation where Deadpool's the one who's going to bring these characters into the MCU, and so when he's palling around with the new guy, he's cracking jokes about the fact that, oh, the, my, the other Wolverine, or, or whoever, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, and then giving the new guy shit for having to live up to the precedent that Jackman set. Like, it's really not that hard. It's not that complicated. It kind of writes itself in a way. And if they really are hell-bent on having Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman together in an MCU movie, just have Hugh Jackman play himself. You don't need to have him be Wolverine in this setting. I think we'll all get the gist of it, and it won't undermine the ending we got to that specific version of the character. The fact that people are defending this by saying anything can happen in the multiverse is just so goddamn lazy, man. It's the dumbest get out of jail free card that Marvel has been abusing in the aftermath of Endgame. Oh, it's the multiverse. It's a new universe. It's fine. It's total freedom. I mean, sure, that's really the only way this can possibly work is being a different Wolverine in a different continuity somehow, but it still feels like a cheap cash grab. Don't ever leave anyone wanting more, only give them too much. And of course it's happening in a fucking Deadpool movie because he's the catch-all lampshade. You can do anything because it's meta. I knew this was going to happen the second No Way Home brought back Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, which was less egregious, and I'll admit it did work in the context of that film. But then we got Multiverse of Madness that not only resurrected Patrick Stewart's Charles Xavier, another decision I take a lot of issue with, no matter how cool it might be to see him in the yellow hoverwheel chair from the 90s animated series and comics, but indulged 
in popular fan casts. When was it decided that pandering to fan fiction is more important than upholding the artistic integrity, narrative, character, and emotions? I don't know. It just feels like the MCU thinks so little of its audience, it's almost condescending. You may feel differently, and that's fine. But to me, it's like, sure, treat us like we're just here for the cameos. We all tuned into X-Men Origins Wolverine for Deadpool, right? It's not like we followed Hugh Jackman for 17 years because we wanted to see how things went for his character. No way! We just wanted to see Wolverine smoke a cigar with Deadpool, throw back a shot with Deadpool, get shit-faced, and just stab each other with some witty Joss Whedon-esque banter. Oh god, man, it's just depressing. And honestly, every time the MCU makes me think they've grown above this, they take 10 steps back. How do they go from something so creatively fresh and standalone with Werewolf by Night to Deadpool 3 resurrecting Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. As I previously mentioned, you could have used that movie to reboot the X-Men properly and start a new generation of portrayals for these characters. You could have been forward thinking instead of dwelling in a pool of nostalgia. Instead, we're just doing this! It's so lazy. There are so many stories you could be telling here. Hell, with Deadpool alone, not only is that a bridge to the X-Men and to new things that you could be doing, you could lean back into the satirical elements the way that first Deadpool movie did and make another movie that truly deconstructs, through a loudspeaker at that, the entire notion of the state of superhero movies. There are so many original and even downright bold stories that you could be using this character to tell, and instead, you're just gonna bring back Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, the lowest of the low-hanging fruit, the most uninspired attempt to generate blanket hype. And granted, we haven't seen this film yet. We haven't seen a frame of it. Maybe Deadpool 3 will be good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not optimistic, but it also isn't necessarily geared towards me, clearly. Maybe Jackman's Wolverine won't even be the focus of it. Maybe he'll just be a lightning fast cameo. But that almost feels worse than giving him one last ride, five years after what should have remained his one last ride. If you undermine what Logan did, which you just simply are, either intentionally or not, by simply making the film with Jackman's Wolverine for the sake of a gag, that feels even lazier. And it's not less lazy or accepted just because Ryan Reynolds is admitting that it is on camera. But like I said, this isn't just an issue of, oh, well, they're undermining Logan. There's a much bigger issue at hand here. Movies can't help themselves now. It's so goddamn nefarious. And even before this video, I've had people yelling at me like, don't be so dramatic. What are you talking about? You clearly don't get this. But how can you not be despondent about this? F9, funnily enough, the last piece of media, I mean, like I truly loathed, loathed, resurrected Han for reasons. Star Wars brought Palpatine back for reasons. And now there's the MCU cameo craze and this shit. They're killing the genre and defacing entertainment, and honestly, if this is the thing that pops the superhero bubble, so be it. It honestly deserves it the way they're handling all of this. It serves them right for betraying my boy Jimmy Mangold and the absolute masterwork he crafted alongside Hugh Jackman. Hell, it's not even Logan that's getting crapped on by this. Look at the extensive amount of work they put into The Wolverine. They brought the character back from the depths of trash, and had been tossed into by The Last Stand and especially by X-Men Origins Wolverine. He fought tooth and nail to give us back the Wolverine we wanted, the one that Hugh Jackman deserved to play, the one we fell in love with in X-Men and X2. And when you revive Jackman's portrayal of the character in a Deadpool 3 following the aftermath of Logan, you just have to ask yourself, why? What was the point in all of this? What was the point in putting in all that hard work to save 
the character. Speaking of Hugh Jackman, I really don't blame him for this. We all know he'll be paid a king's ransom for it, and good for him, he should be. It'll allow him to fund his creative endeavors on the stage. I don't fault him for not turning it down. I fault the people who made an offer that was impossible to refuse. I fault the so-called creatives for being so goddamn bankrupt that this is all they could think of to do. I fault Disney for repeatedly playing to the cheap seats rather than to the people who actually give a shit about the story their movies are telling. And again, to anyone who thinks I'm just being dramatic or that my take is stupid, then let me ask you this. If it was announced today that Warner Brothers was going to be bringing Christian Bale back as Batman in a Shazam film, a decade after The Dark Knight Rises was about as definitive a send-off for his incarnation as could be, would you really be happy? If so, I mean, all the goddamn power to you. If not, then maybe you see my point. It's not like with Michael Keaton returning in The Flash, where there's a thread that can clearly be picked up on, although even that is teetering the line of maybe falling into this same trap. But still, it's just wild that the same people who sing the praises of the Batman and Joker in the Dark Knight trilogy, hell, I'll fucking throw Man of Steel in there, can be chomping at the bit for all of this MCU fast food. And look, I get indulging in some fast food every now and then, but this is just slop. I get more than my fill from the MCU on a regular day. And yeah, I have enjoyed some of Phase 4. I really liked Moon Knight. I've loved Loki. But I don't need extra side orders of fries like this nonsense. Because then it just becomes too much. And I will say, the MCU projects I've most enjoyed when it comes to Phase 4 are the ones that dared to do something different, or the ones that just at least attempted to tell a single, isolated, insular story. The ones that weren't obsessed with fan service or an interconnected universe. I don't know, man. It's just really sad that this is what pop culture has come to. That this is what needs to happen in order to get people excited. It's not even good enough anymore to do three movies and 27 miniseries a year. It's not enough to already be overindulging in Easter eggs, nostalgia, fan bait, and service, toys, profit, commerce. Merchandising! where the real money from the movie is made. Now, you've got to undo what one of the defining masterpieces of your genre did. It's bastardizing art and creativity. If you're a filmmaker like James Mangold, who married both prestige picture filmmaking and good storytelling with the genre thrills and beloved characters of comic book movies, how can you not? be disheartened. If you're Christopher Nolan, who worked tirelessly to make a good movie that happened to feature Batman, or Matt Reeves, who did the same thing just earlier this year, how can you not look at this and just think, God, why don't we even try? Because the sad part is, this movie's going to make a billion dollars. It's going to be a theater-going hype-fest roller coaster, and then on home video, no one's going to talk about it. It's going to be forgotten, and not examined or mined for its artistic merit. You think Deadpool 3 is going to have the amount of words written about it and continued adoration five years on the way Logan has? Even Endgame's flame has waned in just three and a half years, and that was the highest grossing movie ever at the time. I'm not saying this movie needs to be some prestige drama or crime thriller, but even great comedies stand the test of time. Look at most all of Judd Apatow's films. We're not asking for an Oscar caliber film here, we're just asking for more than a dopamine rush, more than a glorified cameo for an actor in a role where it was a definitive end. And no, it doesn't matter that it's a different Wolverine or a multiverse or a different timeline or whatever the fuck. We all know the X-Men continuity has been a mess for years. It's the principle of finality, of letting a specific interpretation of a character rest once they've reached their conclusion. And no, I don't care what they do in the comics, that they're killing and resurrecting and killing and resurrecting characters on a regular basis. Film is a completely different medium because of the fact that you have actors attaching themselves to these characters for years, and even with that factor taken out, we all know how resurrection has cheapened things in the comics as well, how it's just made entire arcs and runs feel moot. And hell, when characters do get resurrected in the comics, it's usually in service of a completely new interpretation, akin to that of casting a new actor to play the character. No one's saying we can't ever have another Wolverine. It just 
cheapens the impact of what should have been Hugh's final go around as Logan, regardless of when or where it's set. It also further postpones fresh and new interpretations of the character. You'll never get the effect or finality of that final shot from Logan back. The MCU and Deadpool and whoever the fuck else are just grave robbers. Am I really gonna defile this grave for money? Of course I am! And the final product of what they're doing here, I expect, for me at least, will be dead on arrival. We're now at a place where if one of these franchise films doesn't include cameos, and this isn't just a Marvel issue by the way, this is Star Wars, this is a whole lot of other stuff too. If they don't include cameos, or guest stars, or legacy actors returning to iconic versions of characters, it's considered a disappointment. For a brand that's so obsessed with nostalgia, you'd think they'd view the trailblazing comic book movies of the past as more than just X actor playing X iconic character. You'd think maybe they'd look at those early Marvel movies, the good ones, the ones that truly resonated with people, and find a way to bottle that and pump it into their current projects because good god do they need that. Some of you are probably going to roll your eyes, but I truly think all of this can be traced back to the fallout of The Last Jedi. Disney decided to never again, or at least very seldom, take a creative risk after that film. Why make art that sparks conversation, that sparks controversy, that upsets people, when you can instead pivot to the universality, to nostalgia and comfort, to pleasing everyone and saying nothing at all? What does it really add? How is that what the mediums become? It's all in service of hawking a product, and that's what happens when you have a goddamn theme park company in charge of a movie studio. The lines begin to blur, and they shouldn't even be in the same conversation. The argument of, oh, you know, what harm is it causing? It's just, it's fine. You guys, you're, you're thinking too hard about this. It's naive, and it misses the big picture. It's exactly what Scorsese was talking about when he said that Marvel movies are like theme parks. These studios are training audiences to expect one thing, expect one kind of an experience until it becomes the whole of our media consumption, at least when it comes to blockbusters or the mainstream stuff. These projects dominate the pop culture zeitgeist enough as is. Shouldn't they be a bit more responsible with how they utilize their real estate? how they tell stories, their relationship with the audience, and it's not like you can ignore it either given the stranglehold these IPs have over the masses. Maybe I'm alone here. I certainly feel alone with the mass amount of hype surrounding the announcement. When did we collectively decide that fan service and nostalgia turning everything into a joke was the most important factor when it comes to making movies? When everything is a joke, when nothing is earnest and sincere, when the biggest films in the world are vehicles for marketing and selling a product, we as an audience, as viewers, as consumers and champions of art and the power of storytelling have lost. Shot composition, color, well-written, complicated, relatable protagonists, performance, emotions, creativity, originality, the vision of a singular artist with something that comes from the heart, something birthed out of passion and not commerce. Maybe people don't care. Maybe people only care about the next big team up, about seeing every iteration of every comic book character to have ever graced the silver screen show up in an absurd culmination movie, to see Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man crack a joke about Wolverine's leather suit as Ben Affleck's Daredevil makes fun of the dated CGI of Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider head, while Jennifer Gardner's Elektra mistakes Charlie Cox for her Matt Murdock. It's just meaningless. It was the stupidest sentence I think I've ever said in one of these videos. It's soulless cashing in on a cheap joke. In the words of Ian Malcolm, they were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think about whether or not they should. If this is truly the future, if the cameoification of big screen entertainment is all that matters, that's very sad. These movies used to be more. These studios used to take risks, used to give a shit. Yeah, they were still putting out a product and making boatloads of money, but the success of the MCU wasn't a surefire thing yet. And before the MCU, those risks were even more pronounced. Superhero movies have always gotten stick for being, I don't know, hollow? But 
more often than not, they weren't. They were often an exploration of our human condition through the eyes of something bigger than us, something superhuman, something that made us believe. They were able to take us to, no pun intended, new heights. They were stories first before they were spectacle. And in turn, the spectacle, the wonder, came about naturally. And even more importantly, almost without fail, you were able to see these extraordinary beings as having as much personhood as you or I. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is maybe still the best example of this to date. He's a quasi-invincible mutant. He's lived triple the lifespan of even the most prolific human. And yet, he still remains deeply human not even in spite of, but often because of the things that make him so extraordinary, that make him so physically and genetically superior to the rest of us. His immortality is so often explored as a tragedy, not a benefit. He wasn't just a massive dose of nostalgia bait. He was a fully formed and compelling lead character, one of the best in the history of movies. Not just superhero movies, mind you, but movies. And now what's being done with him in Deadpool 3 reduces him to nostalgia bait, the very thing that made Wolverine a fan favorite, that got people excited for the next X-Men movie or the next Wolverine movie, has been taken away from his fans by resurrecting Hugh Jackman's portrayal of him. 